April Fool's Day has come and gone again, though it seems like the internet really wasn't putting their all into it this year. Google turned Google Maps into Pac-Man again, and Amazon promoted an Echo for Pets. Nothing terribly big there. Sega did something kinda cool though. At long last, Bayonetta has gotten a PC release. 8-Bit Bayonetta, a very limited adaptation of Platinum's Combat. It's not exactly the PC port gamers dreamed of, but at the same time the game released, a mysterious countdown appeared on Sega's website, so cross your fingers. Pornhub delivered with its April Fool's prank this year, sending out a shocking message about automatically sharing your video views to social media, which doubled as both a good joke and a reminder that Pornhub uses HTTP secure protocols to keep your browsing habits relatively private. And speaking of things that congressional Republicans would rather do away with, George Takei got the nation's hopes up today when he announced he'd be running to DC California Representative Devin Nunes. Nunes has been under fire lately for his role in actively obstructing the House Intelligence Committee in the investigation of President Donald Trump and his possible collusion with the Russian government. Which brings us to Russia, who had the best prank of all this year. Yesterday, the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs released their new answering machine message, which invites callers to press 1 to arrange a call from Russian diplomats to a political opponent. You could also press 2 for use of services of Russian hackers, and 3 to request election interference. <laughs> it's funny because 8 high-profile Russians have been shot to death or died under unusual circumstances since November. So, Adult Swim released the premiere of Rick and Morty's long-awaited third season last night. No, not an April Fool's joke. After more than a year off the air, April 1st is the day that they decided to surprise release the episode, which is really an entirely appropriate thing for the show to do. Meanwhile, Spider-Man Homecoming has a new trailer out. Hot on the heels of the last week's poster onslaught, the trailer shows off Peter's vacuum-sealed suit and gives away kind of a lot of the plot, so don't go looking for it if you're adverse to spoilers. Subtly transitioning over to video games, Telltale's Guardians of the Galaxy video game got a trailer too, and yeah, it's pretty much exactly what you would expect it to be. In other gaming news, Blizzard announced about an hour after I finished editing last week's video that the original StarCraft is getting remastered and re-released. It appears that other than updating the game's 20-year-old graphics for 4K resolutions and pulling the game into widescreen, it'll play exactly like the original, right down to the wonky Dragoon pathing, which is probably the only way anybody interested in this remaster would find it acceptable. Hitting theaters this week, if you have kids, maybe you could tolerate taking them to... Smurfs The Lost Village. I can't say it looks particularly good, but at least it isn't half CGI and half live action. For something a little more grown up, there's... Going in style. In this movie, Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine, and Alan Arkin are three old-timers who decide to get back at the system by robbing a comically evil bank. Although, honestly, I'd be just as fine watching a movie about these three talking about The Bachelorette. Next up... Colossal. Anne Hathaway is a mess, but apparently she's also in control of a giant monster. I'm not sure how you make a movie about that, but I am interested to find out. And finally... The Void. Which looks creepy and seems to be about a sheriff's deputy facing off against a whole lot of evil cultists. I think there's some psychic stuff going on in there too somewhere. Over on television, another long-awaited return as Prison Break comes back to Fox after eight years off the air. The nine-episode limited series will bring Wentworth Miller and Dominic Pearsall back together for the first time since, well, since they've been co-starring on Legends of Tomorrow. More importantly though, Archer is back for its eighth season, this time on FXX, which is apparently a thing. Always switching things up, it looks like this time around Archer's going nor with Archer Dreamland. And finally in video games, Feral Fury looks like a nifty twin stick shooter. I don't know if it'll dethrone the Binding of Isaac, but there looks to be a good variety of weapons and enemies to mow down. Next up, the gaming world's premier masturbation theme game has a sequel. What's Under Your Blanket 2 has more random weirdness and public indecency than ever before. Invicta Beam is a cool-looking first-person shooter that claims to be about defeating the undefeated game boss from your childhood. I don't know what that means, but there is a giant flying robot dinosaur skeleton to shoot. Next up, One Hit KO looks to be mechanically identical to One Finger Death Punch, but I suppose it would kind of have to be, as that's the point of the game. The biggest difference here is that One Hit KO features a variety of characters and backgrounds rather than stick figures. 
For a more complex game, there's Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment. The latest expansion in the Shovel Knight franchise puts you in control of Spectre Knight and another tight-knit platforming adventure. Moving on to some tower defense, Turretcraft is a tower defense game that allows maze building, which seems to be increasingly rare in the genre. Case in point, Steampunk Syndicate, another tower defense game, this time with a cool steampunk art style. No maze building here that I can see, instead the mechanic seems to center around modifying your towers with random cards. For more platforming fun, Slime Sand looks to be like your typical Meat Boy clone, but if you've been watching me long enough, you'll know I'm a sucker for a unique visual style. Speaking of which, two first-person shooters made the list this week? Madness. Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition is a remaster of a 2011 game that seems to have slipped under everybody's radar. Much like Feral Fury though, it seems to have a good variety of weapons and enemies, so maybe it's deserving of its second chance. And finally, over on the PlayStation, Persona 5. I've never paid much attention to the franchise, but people go nuts over it. For this week's CG Bros video, we have Less Than Human by Team LTH, a different take on what could happen in the aftermath of a zombie outbreak. Ugh. Hey, what was it you were saying before? Come on, you know it's impossible for me to hear anything from, um... What's this? What's going on here? And that brings us to this week's awesome video. Robot Underdog is doing what Hollywood won't by casting Asians in live-action anime adaptations. Dragon Ball Z Light of Hope caught the attention of the internet in 2015, and after two years of waiting, it looks like we're finally going to get a more fleshed-out fan film. That's everything for this week, so what was your favorite April Fool's Day prank? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe, pass this video around to your friends, and have a great week!